In 2016, I started learning code. I was uh, working as a barista at a coffee shop. I was sometimes working 16 hours a day, sometimes, not often, but it happened I was working for like 20 hours a day. And I was really, you know, fed up with it. I wanted a new career and I stumbled upon coding. You know, a guy told me about it. I remember that I had a friend that had a friend and he was a coder and he was making good money back in my home country. And I was like, okay, let me, let me give this a shot. So I went to the library, I picked up a book. I think it was JavaScript and jQuery for beginners by a guy called John Duckett or something like that. And you know, the journey started. I went on lynda.com, which is right now is LinkedIn learning or something like that. They got acquired. I bought courses on Udemy. I've tried everything, right? For the first six to nine months or so, I was stuck. I was uh, trying different things. I was starting a course and then I was going till, you know, a, the first checkpoint, which is build your first project. And then I was getting stuck and then I was buying another course and then I was following the steps. I came to the first milestone where I was supposed to build a project or something like that. And then I got stuck again. And then I was repeating this cycle over and over and over again. But at the same time, I put together a resume full of typos, uh, absolutely gross resume. I found it a few months ago and I pretty much cringed when I look at it. I finally managed to get an interview. You know, uh, I was so excited about that. If you know how difficult it used to be back in the day to get an interview as a self-taught developer without experience and without a degree, nobody wanted self-taught developers. I somehow managed to score an interview with that crappy resume that I had. I take a day off. I don't tell my boss, you know, why I, why I need a day off. I just came up with a, you know, excuse as you do. And uh, I put my nice shirt on. I remember it was like a blue shirt and uh, it was like my best shirt. You know, I was only wearing it uh, Sunday for church. And then when I went to that interview and I cycled down to the city of London, I arrived there. I see this massive building with like glass walls and whatnot. And, you know, I feel like I've made it. You know, if I come to work here every day, everyone would be proud of me, right? My mom, my dad. They would think that I've made something of myself. Then I go up, everyone is like super well-dressed and whatnot. I meet up with the recruiter. He's starting to ask me questions, to get to know me. He says, hey, like you seem like you have a lot of potential, but you have nothing to show us. And then I went back home and I said, this is not gonna happen again. I started to work day in and day out. I started putting into practice the knowledge that I gained so far, because I thought I didn't know. The problem was, I did not have wisdom. I had a lot of knowledge, but I, knew I never managed to get wisdom because I never put my knowledge into practice. So in this video, I want to show you what you have to do to never have to experience what I have experienced. I don't want you to go through that roller coaster of emotions of thinking you've made it and then suddenly you lose everything and you lose hope. So I want to share with you the two things that you need to do to get a developer job. This is gonna be the fastest way to go about getting that first developer job, guaranteed. So here's what I was doing wrong. The advice online is stupid. The advice online is stupid. Everyone says build project. And probably I said that as well. And this advice is not stupid because it's wrong. It's stupid because it's not refined enough. If I tell someone that just started JavaScript yesterday to build projects, that person will feel insecure, is gonna feel inadequate, it's gonna feel stupid, it's gonna feel disappointed, it's gonna feel like this is too much for them. There is a time and a place for that advice, but that time and the place is not for your first day. So that's why the first phase is to understand the language. And this will apply to you if you are learning Python or C++, Java. You cannot build anything of meaning Okay, because when people hear this word projects, they hear something of meaning. And I agree, it should be something meaningful, the thing that you are about to build. But as a noob, you need to learn, learn the basics. Okay, first you learn, then you build. So most people, including myself, when I was learning code, we tried to skip the learning of the basics and we went straight into, or we attempted going straight into like building projects and whatnot, and we failed. 
And because of that, we thought something is wrong with us. I thought something was wrong with me. Probably you think something is wrong with you. And there's nothing wrong with you. You just do the wrong thing at the wrong time. If that's you, and if you are having issues with building projects and whatnot, that means you don't have enough knowledge. Now, how do you fix this problem? Because it's a problem and has to be addressed. Otherwise, you won't be able to build anything. In my coaching program, plug intended, I have two types of people, either complete noobs or people who are stuck like you in this situation and they are stuck in something called tutorial hell. Tutorial hell is a place where you buy a bunch of courses or you go on YouTube and you watch people cloning different applications and then you follow along. What those people have, which is very valuable, is the fact that they have practiced the syntax a lot for many months. They started understanding subconsciously some array methods, the way to work with objects, the way to work with arrays, with strings. They understand the basic stuff because they've seen them in a bunch of applications or courses that they are following along from. This is the trick. If you're a noob, all you have to do is to write a lot of code. You need to write code that doesn't make any sense. So let's say you are learning right now functions. Your course has, let's say, one video on functions. The wrong way to do this is by just doing the exercise the course gave you. So three, write three functions, one that adds two numbers and one that multiplies five numbers and whatnot, right? Don't do that. I mean, do that, but don't stop there, okay? Try to figure out how you can apply those functions to something in the real world. So for example, instead of having a function multiply that takes in two numbers, create a function that calculates calories in a macronutrient. Every food that you have has either carbs, fats, or proteins. You can look at the nutritional pack of any food that you're eating and you'll see that behind there, right? You'll see that every carb has four calories, every protein has four calories, every fat has nine calories. So then you can create a function that calculates how many calories are in X amount of carbs. Simple, but it has some real world application. And because of that, you start to understand the purpose of this super, how can I call it? How can I call this thing? I'm trying to find the right word to call this. Um, so the world of JavaScript and it's like the world of uh, mathematics, right? It's very abstract, right? This is the word. So we are trying to bring the abstract, which doesn't really make sense for us, doesn't really click. We are trying to bring it into the real world. And I want you to keep practicing on top of what you are learning right now on your course, I want you to keep practicing what you've practiced in the past five lessons and so on and so forth until you are able to write everything without even thinking about it. The first goal is to know what you can do with the thing, knowing how to write the things that it can do, right? And then you switch into building. Then you start building the projects. And projects are very simple. You can just open a web app, website, and replicate parts of it one by one, a drop down, a list with different things, a model, maybe try to, you know, reproduce some social media posts and so on and so forth. Just try to reproduce as much stuff as you see, okay? Because you learn from seeing what other people are doing and try to make it as close as possible to what those people are making, right? At some point you'll be capped by your knowledge, by your ability to ask questions, but that's fine. That's how you get experience, by being exposed to all these things. As you are going through this process, you'll feel insecure, you'll feel like, oh, I'm dumb, etc., etc. And if you give up, that's it, you lost the, the game, okay? You lost the game and web development become less saturated. So thanks for your service. But if you don't give up, gonna make you one of those five percenters, then you'll start to get better and better. If you learn how to manage your emotions, your brain that's gonna that is always against you, right? Your brain is always against you. Let me tell you a little story. I have a big problem, right? Which is uh, I love sugar, okay? And I love binge eating bullshit. I've made like this contract with myself, which is super weird. I, I, I wrote on, uh, I have like a notebook, but I wrote there, I've made a contract with myself and I said, I'm never gonna eat bullshit again without a special occasion, right? If it's someone's birthday, I'm gonna do it. And yesterday, after three days, two or three days after I wrote that, my brain was starting to tell me, you know, like maybe you should buy that chocolate. It's just 300 grams. It's not gonna add too much to your physique. My brain is fighting against me. Your brain is fighting against you. When you feel like quitting, 
your brain is fighting against you. It's so crazy. You cannot listen to yourself. If you go through this process and you want to get a different career, you want to get into a different career, you want to make more money, that money that you'll be making is not just some extra zeros. Will mean better food, a better lifestyle, being able to travel, see different countries, expand your horizons, make new friends. Your life is going to be changed dramatically. I know it did for me. Your biggest enemy is in here and you need to learn how to fight it. Especially when you start going through interviews and you'll be rejected. If you cannot laugh in front of the rejection, with time, it's going to come at you and it's going to make you feel like shit, doubt yourself. And then if you quit, you'll develop this thing called the beach gene. It's always gonna drag you down. So you'll quit coding for like six months, you'll be devastated. You won't have energy to do anything else. And then you'll find a new opportunity. Let's say TikTok dropshipping. And then you'll try TikTok dropshipping. And it's not as easy as the guy mentioned it in the sales page. And then after three weeks, you give up and you say TikTok is saturated da, da, da. and the beach gene becomes stronger then you wait another three weeks you try something else and then you start going down and in reality everything you had to do was to not listen to yourself and to keep building stuff first you learn then you build in the learning phase you learn enough so you can have something to build with you build 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 you you never stop you go to a website called it's called product hunt and then you find some product, then you try to replicate it, make it better, add your twist to it. In an ideal world, you would find some other people that you would work with that are as dedicated as you are. You just learn how to be a team player, you know, how to communicate with them effectively so you guys don't work on the same thing at the same time, how to split work evenly. Just be a software engineer, a software developer. And it's not easy, it's simple, it's not easy, it takes time, but it's worth it. And the time is gonna pass anyway, so why not do the right thing at the right time? So figure out in which phase you are. I want you to play where you are, okay? If you are in the learning phase, don't go into the building phase. If you're in the building phase, don't be stuck learning a bunch of theory and never applying and never building stuff. Okay, so you need to figure out where you are. And uh, that's pretty much the video for today. If you need coaching, that's the first link in the description. If you wanna check the coaching program, uh, that's the second link in the description. You can see our projects in there. You can see how I interact with the people. You can see the community, see if they seem happy. There are a few free courses as well, so you can take them from there. We have the live call recordings in there, so you can see how we interact with each other. So you can learn from us instead of watching Netflix, you can watch those videos from there. You can also see the interview prep calls. We do interview prep every single week. Imagine that having nine months of interview prep. Most people have zero interview prep and you'll have nine months. It's crazy, but um, that's what you get if you have the right coach and if you are ready for it, if you are ready to go the extra mile. So that's pretty much it. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.